Hey there, beautiful teachers, and welcome to another Vibrant Music Teacher Chat. I'm thrilled to be here with you again. And if we haven't met yet, hello! My name is Nicola Canton. I run a site called Vibrant Music Teaching and this YouTube channel called Colorful Keys, where I help you to teach more creatively, have more fun while doing it, and run an effective music teaching business. And the special topic for today is on that business side of things. It's all about marketing your music lessons in 2021. What's different this year and what's the same? Well, we're going to dive into all that later. But if you are brand new to the show, do say hi to us in the chat. And we go through several other things in these chats each week. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you get the next one as soon as it comes out because we also talk about the latest music teacher news, what's going on around vibrant music teaching and colourful keys as well as what's going on broader, more broadly around the web. And we do web reviews, which is extra relevant today, to look at a couple of websites and see what we can learn from how other teachers are marketing their studios. And we have our Ask Me Anything section. So if you're catching this on the replay, join us next time live if you can, because then you can ask me about absolutely anything in the last section of the show. So let's dive in to the latest news from our wonderful, amazing industry. Right, so in my personal update this week, lots going on this week. Oh my gosh, it's been a busy one and an unusual one. Uh, I'm often busy, but I'm usually busy creating resources, whereas this past week has been a bit different. So my big thing, which Laurie, thank you so much. Yes, it did go very well. Um, I had a student concert yesterday. So I normally don't work on Sunday, so I had an extra day of work this week and uh, it's worth it to do that concert for my students at a time that works for the families. And so we were doing a mashups and medleys concert and that was really fun. We might do a show featuring how I put that together and stuff at a later date. If that's of interest, let me know in the chat. But it was a really fun show. And something I wanted to share with you from that show, which is actually the thing that didn't go well. <laughs> so I had planned something extra and fun to make it more like, uh, more like a show, basically, um, in between the sections of performance. So basically I had four chunks of video. So it would be back-to-back -back performances for 10 to 15 minutes, then I come on screen, like I do here, because I already have this set up right on Ecamm Live, and I'd come on screen and say, oh, everyone's so fantastic, here's what to watch out for in the next performances, right? Which is um, fun, and it works as a format, and I really enjoy it. Um, Elizabeth, we can definitely time chime, talk about uh, how I set that up. I've been wondering actually about whether you guys would like a more technical tutorial on that or do you just want the simpler version? Like, do you want to know the way I did it or do you want to know the simplest way to do it? Because Zoom would definitely be simpler than what I do, which is broadcasting to YouTube like this using Ecamm Live, but unlisted. Anyway, that's something I can share about more if you guys are interested in that. Either or, just the general setup or the tech setup or maybe one on each. Um, so, Angie, more technical. Okay, we'll see if others agree with you. So the Ecamm Live setup works really well for me and it means that I can go through chunk after chunk and I come on in between and just cheer everyone on and, and make it more of a live experience and talk about what people are chatting about, right? To encourage them to engage with it more and really show up live. And that part of it went great and the performances were wonderful. Um, the students' videos, some are, you know, better technical quality than others, but they were all great performances, and that was awesome. For those who aren't familiar, by the way, we're on full lockdown, back in full lockdown here in Ireland, so they were recording them at home and sending them to me. And so, yeah, that all went well. And the other thing I'm really happy about is that we had really good attendance. So people actually came live, which again, we're on full lockdown, there's not much else to do, but still I'm really proud that we had more live than the number of students participating. And if you consider that within a family, people usually watch together, 
um, that's really good. It means that they had actually invited grandparents or aunts or uncles and stuff like that, which is what I want them to do, and that's great. And the chat participation was wonderful as well this time. Here's the thing that didn't go well. I had this fun little thing to come up on screen um, when I came on screen in between the performances. And I'll just show you that briefly, and I might even be able to show you... No, I'll show you the one that actually works. Okay, this was supposed to happen. I was, yeah, showing you the issue. See this? See this jumpiness? That's not what's supposed to happen. So, <laughs> that happened to me um, during the show. And I wanted to share that with you because, yeah, it wasn't ideal. It was supposed to, let's see if this version works. No, it's still not working, see? It was supposed to be way smoother than that. And it did work on the last one in the show, but basically it was a lesson for me in shutting down absolutely everything on my computer. <laughs> but it's also a lesson for you guys in, you know, I do this stuff all week. Like, I'm literally, doing this live show every week. I'm doing tons of different live stuff. Um, and lots of technical things. I don't consider myself any kind of technical wizard, but I do m know my way around software and computers. And yet, things like that happened to me. So it got frozen. It wasn't like that where I could switch it off. It actually got frozen. That's how much I overloaded the CPU on my computer. And so I was just surrounded by confetti and it was stuck there. And I just talked through it and kept going. <laughs> and it was fine. So, it looked nice. Yeah, it looks better when it works in proper motion, Lori. But, you know, that's life. And parents are going to recognise that you tried. And, you know, the clapping sound still works. And I'm happy with that. So, things do not go smoothly when you're doing live things. And you just have to roll with it. So, if something like that happens to you, or much worse, maybe the whole thing crashes and you just start again or reschedule know that it happens to the best of us and people will understand if you're just honest about it with them and, you know, a little bit vulnerable about it. This is what happened. Let's move on. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you, but otherwise the concert went great and I definitely can share more about that in the future, but that's not the topic of today's show. So the other thing I was doing last week um, was putting together the thing I kind of hinted at last week, well, I told you about it a little bit, and that is the Teacher Turbo Boost. So that is full steam ahead now. It's called the Teacher Turbo Boost. You can get to it at that address, teacherturboboost.com. will take you to the info page about it if you want to learn more about this event. Now, if you are a Vibrant Music Teaching member, please, 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 please go to the forums and look for the post there. It's right at the top. It's the pinned announcement. You'll see it as soon as you arrive on the forums on the community side of the site. And that will give you a special link so that you can get it at a big discount. Okay? So if you're a member, go over there. If you're not a member and you want that discount as well as everything else that we do, you can sign up at vibrantmusicteaching.com. But back to the teacher turbo boost. I'm really excited about this. Maybe too excited. No, there is no too excited, is there? Is there such a thing? I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be really, really fun and different. And I hesitate to even say that because I know all the emails you're getting and all the stuff that you've been getting since the very beginning of the pandemic, or since May at least, um, has been from people going, we're running an online event, but listen, it's like no other online event you've ever seen. It's going to be way more everything. And so that's why I hesitate to say different, but this really is going to be different. So here's how it works. It's like a camp or a retreat. It is five days with three hours per day. So we're not doing two gigantic conference days. We're doing five days three hours a day, okay? I'm doing it the last week in March, which runs into the beginning of April. I'm doing that because that is our Easter break right here in Ireland. So it means that I will be able to do it during usual teaching hours for me, which means that in the US it will be, or sorry, in Eastern US it'll be 10 a.m. 
yeah, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And so in LA, like on that side, on the West Coast, it's still doable. Yeah, it's 7 a.m., but you know, you can be in your PJs, you won't be on screen for the first few hours, it'll be fine. So it will work for you across the US, I hope. Especially if you're still teaching during that time, it'll still work for you to show up live. Um, it won't work for the Aussies. I can't help that. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, hoping it will work for the majority of people to be able to show up live. If you're in Ireland or probably if you're in the UK, you're off teaching during that week as well because it's the lead up to Easter. So that's the plan. It's five days, three hours per day. That's not enough of a difference though. Here's how it works. So for the first couple of hours, we have presentations on various topics, really interesting topics. Each day has a special theme and the presentations will all be on that topic, but they're short, okay? So they're going to be, I will do one that's a little bit longer as the introduction, that's like half an hour. And then the other ones are gonna be like 15 minutes and we'll talk about those in between. So they're short and sharp, and they will give you one fantastic, interesting idea or concept or way to rethink something. Each of those is going to be given by a different guest. And oh my gosh, I have some amazing guests lined up for you. Really, they are just all my favorite people. I mean, I've been blown away at the people who are saying yes to this, and it's going to be awesome. So I've already revealed a few of those people on the event page. Uh, so Leela Viss is confirmed. Jennifer Fox is confirmed. Samantha Coates is confirmed, and I already have her video, and it's really fun. Um, Darlene Machakan, I'm not sure if you guys will know her, but she's really wonderful. She's actually a lot on the elementary music teaching side of things and she's um, also a piano teacher but she talks a lot about that so you may not have come across her, her on Instagram or anywhere else. But she has a great podcast and they talk about um, diversity in music and, and that kind of stuff so she's doing it as well, she's happy to come along, really excited to have her and Carol Matz and Ruth Power are also confirmed. Not to just blow past them, they're both awesome as well. But there's lots more to come. And there's lots more people that I'm chatting to. And we're going to have guests throughout the week in these short sessions. And in between those, we will chat about it in real time. Okay? So it's kind of like a webinar, but it's not really. Because, again, like I did the concert, I'm interjecting in between. And we're chatting about it. And we're really having a live community experience. But that's not all the community experience we have. The one reason I really wanted to make this work time zone wise as much as possible is because each day will end with a huddle session. So it's going to be as many people as can make it who are part of this retreat. They're going to come along to that huddle. We're going to be on Zoom for that and split into breakout rooms. If you haven't experienced Zoom breakout rooms before, it's it's a great system. It means you're going to be split up with a small group of teachers. So it's not like a big Zoom thing. It is that in the beginning. And then we all split up into small chunks. So it's way easier to talk to each other. You know, if you've been on a Zoom call with like 30, 50, however many people, you don't feel, I don't feel good about speaking up. Unless I'm supposed to be the host. But if not, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> and then people have to put their hand up. And Whereas when you have like three or four people, you can have a much more genuine conversation and a brainstorming session. So I will provide you with all that you need to talk about during that time. And a, a structure for it so that it's not like overwhelming talking to a stranger. That you have a structure behind that. And you're in a breakout room with this small group of teachers and you'll meet different teachers each day. So in that way it's much more like a conference because you'll actually get to meet other people who are there and um, it's much more even better than a conference in one way because at a conference there tend to be like cliques. Have you ever been a, at a conference where it's a bit like that? Yeah you could go up to them but you have to have a bit of confidence to go up to this group of teachers who obviously all already know each other and so this is 
more randomized. So you really do meet teachers from everywhere doing everything. And you learn so much more from that, really. The more diverse your group, your sphere of influence is, the better. So that's the basic structure each day. And I will let you check out the event page. Again, that's at um, teacherturboboost.com. You can check that out if you want to get all the details about how it works and the schedule and everything like that. And again, if you're a member, please check the um, forums and you'll see the link there where you can get the really discount ticket. Okay, so it's a steal. It's it's a great value either way because as I say, it's a five day camp. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be so much fun. And I've been preparing for that all last week. In the blogosphere, though, we did release some new content as well. Um, we had how to attract more adult piano students. So today we're talking about general marketing, but that was specifically about adult piano students and how you can attract them to your studio. So if those are the students you most want in your studio, definitely go to colorfulkeys.com and check that out. And we revamped an older post, which was a practical guide to teaching adults. So when you have those adults flooding into your studio, what do you do with them? You'll also find that at the top of the blog page. And then here on YouTube, we talked about automatic invoices. Very thrilling topic, but it is useful. So definitely check that out if you need a way to automate the invoices. Right, on to our sneak peek sections of what's coming up. All right, so next week here on the chat, we're going to be talking about the best books for adult beginners. So I'm going to share some of my favorite books. Uh, with you and I can give you little insights um, into what they look like and what I would use with each type of student. So hopefully you'll be excited about that one. And then in two weeks today, we have our first live masterclass of 2021. So that is... so many links today. <laughs> Make sure you're opening new tabs with these vibrantmusicteaching.com slash coach because it is called From Teacher to Coach How to Work with Adult Students. So it's all about that um, different approach that we need with older students where we're no longer really a teacher, especially as they go up in and become more advanced. We're not really teaching teaching, we're more coaching them through. And so this is about that process and that gradu gradation, I guess, from one to the other as we progress with our older students. So we have the live, the live masterclass that is in two weeks from today. And after that, a week after that, we will have our member huddle. So the masterclass is for everyone. It's free. The replay of the masterclass and then the follow-up member huddle which is a live call on Zoom with the breakout rooms like I just described for the camp, that is going to be for members only. So live and, you know, a limited time replay just to catch all the different time zones and be fair in that regard. That is free for everyone. After that, you need to be a member. So you have to sign up to get access to that. Or if you're already a member, you will see all the details in your inbox about that. Really excited for that masterclass. And um, yeah, it should be super fun. Really looking forward to it. Jana, what is the platform for the masterclass? The masterclass is embedded on the VMT site. So it's actually within the Vibrant Music Teaching site. Um, yeah. So that should be a lot of fun. I hope you can come along. Again, the link is vibrantmusicteaching.com slash coach to sign up for that. And make sure to sign up, by the way, even if you're on our email list, because we don't like to send a whole bunch of information that you're not interested in. So we will let you know, but it's best to sign up at that link so that you're sure you get the right details and, and get the notifications when it's going live. Okay, so into our main topic of the day. So in this video, we're talking all about marketing music lessons in 2021. And I want you to tell me what you think is different about marketing music lessons now. 
how should it look different these days? And how have you been trying to market your lessons in the past? What is different in 2021, specifically now that we've gotten through 2020? The big thing on everyone's minds is COVID, right? How do we need to do things differently in light of COVID? Well, that will depend on where you are. And obviously, how you're teaching right now will depend on how things look in your area and government regulations. We're not here to talk about that. But what I did want to mention there is that if you are teaching in an online format or if you have to put social distancing measures in place and teach in person or you're wearing masks or anything like that, you need to be very aware of showing that on your marketing materials on your website in a way that is positive. However you feel about those measures, however you feel about the situation, you need to put forward a positive foot because parents need to see a great music lesson experience. So we're talking about what's different in 2021, but that's actually something that is the same. Parents need to see a great experience. And whether that's kiddos wearing masks or Zoom lessons that they're seeing, they need to see something that looks like fun or like the experience that they want their child to have. The other thing that's changed this year are those online lessons. So we need to make it clear that we're offering that, especially if that's going to be important to parents. And it means that websites are becoming more and more important. It's not just our lessons that went online, folks. It's everything. <laughs> everything became more and more digital in 2020. And that's carrying forward into 2021. Even as people come out of lockdowns, even as vaccines are put in place, even as the situation gets better, and it is getting better, but even as that happens, people are still going to be more digital. Yes, there will be a pushback against that, but people are used to looking online. There are people who didn't have a device, didn't have a tablet, didn't have a computer at home, didn't have the internet didn't have strong Wi-Fi, whatever. And they now do. And they're not going to go back. It's not going to all roll backwards. So your website, your online presence is becoming more important than ever before. But there's much more that's the same. The most important thing in your marketing is that you stand out that you look different. Someone in the chat earlier mentioned about your USP, right? Which is your unique selling proposition. That is more important than anything. And it doesn't have to be some fam fancy schmancy thing. Your unique selling proposition is not my favorite term because it kind of excludes some people who don't get it. Even when I explain that acronym, it's not super clear what we're talking about there. But what we're really saying is, what makes you different? Teaching lessons to all ages and stages does not make you different. That's not your superpower. That's not what makes you special. And so the constant in marketing is that when you're talking to someone, you have to talk to them about you, not about general stuff and not to everyone. You have to talk like you're talking to a specific person that is your ideal customer, your ideal student. Yes, Laurie, absolutely like a niche, but that is a great opportunity to explain a common misunderstanding when it comes to USPs or superpowers or whatever else, or niches, which is that people think that we're talking, because we decide that adult students are our favorite students and we want to talk specifically to them, that we're cutting out everyone else. And you're not. If you have a website that is designed to attack, attract your ideal students and those are 15 year olds, that doesn't mean that you're saying on your site, I only teach 15 year olds. It means that it's optimized towards that person. The parent of the student who's seven, 
who just wants any piano teacher, well, they're still going to get in touch with you. But the parent of the 15-year-old or the 15-year-old themselves who is looking for that ideal teacher who will actually teach them what they want to learn, which is Sum 41. <laughs> who remembers that band? They are going to be ecstatic to get in touch with you. And that is what you want. That is why you need to talk to one person and you need to stand out. You need to be different. The other thing that's not changed at all in marketing and that not enough of us do enough of in the music teaching space, in the small business space, is test, track, repeat. Test, track, repeat. What do I mean by that? I mean, with marketing, it will vary. It depends where you are. It depends what your community will react to. And you can't predict all of that. You can look into the latest social media strategies, but they're often not relevant to you. So what you need to do is try things you think might work. Track it. That's the bit a lot of us are missing. Actually write down, I tried this, I spent this much money, or I spent this much time, or both. And these are the number of students who said they heard about me that way. And this is how long they stayed in my studio. You may find when you track all of those things that you get tons of inquiries through a Facebook ad, through Facebook Messenger, but they only stay for two lessons. Well, that's not a good way to move forward with your marketing. It's not going to get you very far because you we're in the retention business. We need to keep people in our studio. That's the most important factor, right? Yeah, we need to get new people, but really we need to keep the ones we have. And so you need to evaluate on those parameters. And then you test them, you track them, and you repeat that process with something new or with the same thing again and see if the, the results that you got hold up. The other thing that's the same this year, which we're about to see in our web reviews, is that you need to allow people to imagine themselves in your studio. That's why I go on and on about studio photos that are real teachers and students, real people doing the thing that happens in your studio, which is people having a great lesson experience. People need to be able to imagine themselves in that scenario. Stock photos do not help with that. Testimonials that are nameless and faceless don't really help with that either. What does help is videos. They can be shot simply of your recitals, of your Zoom lessons, of the games that you're playing, photos of real students in your studio, and simple language that talks to the actual person who's going to be signing up for lessons, not other teachers. Don't talk in music jargon. Don't make things difficult. Don't make it difficult to understand. There's a great um, catchphrase that a author that I like to listen to a lot called um, Donald Miller. I think I mentioned him last week as well, Donald, Donald Miller, he has a catchphrase which is, if you confuse, you'll lose. It's catchy, but it's also very true. On a website, on online marketing, all of this stuff, if you confuse people, if they're not sure who you teach or what you teach or how you teach or how much it is, you will lose. They're going to go away and it's not even because they didn't like you, it's because they didn't understand it immediately and they got distracted. So keep it simple, to the point, and let people imagine themselves in your studio. With that, let's go in to the web reviews. Our first review today is Redmond's Studio of Music. Um, Celebrating five years in downtown St. Joseph. Nice. Okay, let's go through our checklist before we even start reviewing this. So these are the things we look for in our websites. We're looking for that the person has written enough text. 
They have a clear call to action, meaning a button that tells us what to do. They are consistent in their design, in their fonts and their color, color choices. They show off themselves, like we were just talking about, and they show real photos, and they have a simple menu. So as we go through here, it's not about, and, and thank you so much to the people who put themselves up for these reviews, I really do appreciate it. And it's never about bashing them, or saying, you're doing this wrong, it's about us all helping each other. So let's see which of these things are missing that we can help this teacher to solve. My first thing usually would be the call to action, and that still is jumping out to, to me, but my first thing jumping out on this website is the menu. There's too much stuff up here, um, and especially some confusing titles. So as a new parent coming along, I don't really know what any of this is. The color choice is also a little bit difficult to read. The blue against the dark red is a bit tricky. So black would be fine. Just something simple. Don't try to be too clever with your color choices. Then if I'm a new parent, I'm not sure I... I mean, the studio calendar might be of interest. That's a confusing title. Payments, maybe. Yeah, so I think all of this needs refining. Here's what I would have. This looks like it could be a blog post, so let's just check that out. Oh, that's weird. No, it's not even going anywhere. Okay, so I think that was just a notice. I'm not sure what's happening there. Let me just clear that up on the screen. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. I'm just going to base our review on what we saw just there because um, unless... No, there's no problem with the internet. So, yeah, I'm not sure why that's not loading. That might be a random anomaly on our end, but based on what we just saw, we need to simplify that menu right away. So... It should say simple, like, we all try to be clever. I do this too, right? I try to be cute and funny, and I'm just being confusing. <laughs> so you need to be simple. It should say about, home, contact, lessons, prices, simple words. And it should be one word per menu item. And, like, there it had your name, da -da 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 -da, piano instructor or something like that. Just make that about. That's what people are expecting to see on a website. You don't want to make people think. So that right away, and then the call to action also will be super helpful. Let's take a look at the next one here. So we have Midtown Music Academy. This time we do have a nice simple menu, so this is a good example. Um, home, register, our teachers, FAQs, contact us. Simple. Um, but effective. We also do have a strong call to action. Okay, so I would rethink this coloring. On the hover, you need to change the text. So the purple to light purple is fine. Just make sure the text stays white. At the moment, it's going to gray, so it makes it impossible to see that. Change to white, uh, change, stay white, excuse me, or change to black would be fine. Um... Yep, nice little notice about COVID right there. And then, yeah, stock photos here. So, I know I've seen that one so many times. I would much prefer to see real photos. Whenever you can get those, you know, whenever you have an opportunity to get those in person, I think, yeah, that's the priority there. Everything else on this homepage is looking great. We do have enough text, which is awesome. And... Yeah, nice. Okay, really good. So yeah, just some real photos. That's my note for the home page. Let's take a quick look at another one. Our teachers. Beautiful. If you can't get student photos, by the way, at the moment, I would put your teacher photos. Like, that's a lovely photo for your harp lessons, you know? And that would be great for the other ones. And yeah, if you can just get teacher photos. But, I mean, I would put that for piano. See what I mean? It shows the piano, 
you're having fun with a kiddo, it doesn't have to be as fancy as a stock photo looks. Take a look at the FAQs. This is smart for an FAQ, by the way. Um, Morgan was asking me about that recently on Facebook. About these accordions, because I talk about text being on the page for SEO purposes for Google to find you. And yeah, this is fine. It's still on the page, so code-wise Google is fine with that. It'll be able to read it. Um, yeah, looking really good. That's my main thing, it's the photos, but I think you've done a great job otherwise, so congratulations. Awesome job. And we will move into our Ask Me Anything section, so keep your questions coming in about anything and everything. Our first question here is from The Piano Lesson Experience. I like the title. So, how to to let families who fall outside of the type of age of st or student you're looking for to know it would be best to try another studio? Well, first question to ask yourself is, do you definitely not want them? Because saying that you have a certain niche doesn't mean you don't ever take anyone outside that niche. However, if it's something like they're a five-year-old kiddo and you just don't specialize in preschoolers and you know you're not good at it, it's absolutely sensible to send them to someone else. So, how to let them know? It's literally a case of explaining that. I know there are some great teachers out there for five-year-olds. I've learned through my experience that that is just not my specialty. It's not my forte to use a musical pun and, um, not quite a pun, and here's a list of teachers in the area who would be an awesome fit for your child. I'm not sure if they have avail availability, but definitely get in touch with them. Or I'm not sure of anyone else that's suited, but here's what to look for in a teacher. Uh, that's something I would have to say to people sometimes because I don't have a lot of teachers teachers in my local area who have any similar style to me. So that's for uh, people looking for the same kind of thing, but I don't have a lot of local teachers that I know to refer them to. However, just giving them some guidelines of this is what I would look for if I was a parent looking for a piano teacher or a violin teacher or something else. And these are some of the signs that they're professional, etc, etc. So that would be my approach. Um, Lori, parents tell me after each lesson. Oh, Zelly, sorry, you did. <laughs> Zelly, that is a thing. I'm hip to the groove. Uh, after each lesson, and it works for us. I started a new family and they have not paid me yet. Should I not teach the next lesson until she pays me? Yeah, if they're new, yes. With a family you've had for a while that you know like they're going to do it, yeah, that might work. But without, with a new family, no, I would be very cautious of training them something that is going to be a repeated behavior. You know, many times we lament a behavior a, a parent has towards us. You know, they expect to make a blessing, blah, blah, blah. And then you dig down with that teacher and you discover that that's because you've done it in the past. That's actually what's happening. And the teacher thinks, I've been so nice to them in the past, they shouldn't be expecting this all the time. But it's because you've done that in the past, you're training them to think that that's fine. Um, so they're going to expect that that's okay to do next time. So yeah, it's tough, Lori, but I wouldn't teach them the next lesson. I would get in touch with them, make sure they know, like, oh, hey, this is due, I need that before we go ahead. Let me know um, if you need any help setting it up. You know, you can still take a helpful tone and say, this is how Zelly works, here's a great tutorial about it, or whatever the system is. Um, or this is the alternative to that, feel free to call me, that kind of thing, but you can't teach them without them paying you. Uh, Corey, is there an SEO specialist that is recommended, that is experienced with music teaching websites that I could recommend? No, I don't have anyone to recommend, Corey. And I would advise extreme caution. There, of course, in every profession, there are people out there who are great and are doing, uh, providing a fantastic service and are super. But in SEO, there's a lot of fudgery and trickery. So just be really careful. 
and I realize that's why you're looking maybe for a referral here, but um, to everyone out there, SEO is something where they could stuff your site with nonsense and make you jump to the top of Google and think that they did their job, but they actually just did something really dodgy. Google always has a loophole. It does. But the thing is, Google always catches its loophole and then you have to find the next one. It's far better to just have a high quality website. So the basics of SEO will normally make people rank quite well, Corey. So I would just, I mean, it depends on the competition in your area. And I think you've said in the past that you have quite a lot, right? Um, so yeah, it does depend on the situation. But for most people, having titles that include things people might look for, making sure your pages have enough writing on them, making sure it's well written and that people who arrive at your site don't run away, right? So if you have a site that's super ugly, I'll run away from it. No, joking. If you have a site that has like a big pop-up as soon as you arrive, how many people exit those sites? I do. I'm just like, oh, most of the time they won't close or they have like 50 billion warnings uh, to do with me being in the EU and I'm like you have to make this a better user experience <laughs> like it doesn't matter if I'm in the EU or not you have to have a decent website so making sure to have those basics in place is the first step and those things you can definitely do all the time um you can do yourself all the time you can do yourself but uh yeah if you want to go beyond that I would just try and look for maybe a big music academy that can refer you to someone because they might have looked into that better. Um, yep, that definitely helps you to come to the top in terms of the, the Google My Business page. And that usually shows up uh, above the actual websites because Google loves showing you Google stuff. So, and most people are still searching on Google. So, um, yeah. Google My Business will make you show up with that like maps result for people who aren't sure about that and that is really a great way to go. Um, I hadn't looked at mine in a little while and I did a search, I was checking something and not only were we up at the top, we're almost at the top or almost at the top for our keywords which is awesome. Like I'm not some big mega music studio, right? It's me and a couple of traveling teachers. That's it. We're not a big music school, but we make it almost to the top of that list because of our all our positive reviews. And it doesn't even take that many. I know, Corey, you have way more than me. But just having those few positive reviews, you can get ahead of so many music schools who are just not trying. Yep, absolutely. It's honestly one of the best things you can do is just setting up that Google My Business page and asking people for reviews, which brings me back to a question we had earlier, which was about asking parents for reviews and testimonials and that being kind of awkward. So a few tips on that. First of all, yes, you do have to send an email where you just ask them. And honestly, I would just ask them before you provide any kind of incentive or anything like that. Try just asking. That is the more vulnerable and, you know, cringy one to do. Uh, is to just send the email saying, hey, can you please review? But honestly, in a lot of cases, that's all it takes. They just didn't think of it. And if you've asked them before, they just forgot. Most of the time. Most of our parents know us and like us and know that we need students to stay in business and they're happy to do it, but they need a reminder. Now, if you want to go beyond that, you can provide an incentive, but I would encourage everyone to just ask first. So you just send an email saying, or you can include it on another email, but it honestly will be more powerful if it's just an email about this. Hey, thank you so much for blah, 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 blah. It's awesome to see Susie is this, that, and the other, so they know it's just to them. It will be worthwhile to send a real email, not a group one, on this. And um, if you're having a great experience with us, I would really appreciate you leaving a review. Here's the link to my Google My Business, or here's a form you can fill in, whichever you would prefer. I would suggest Google My Business, and maybe 
the testimonial form as the extra one, or if you need them for your website, I mean, it depends, but just asking them is honestly the first step, and there's no easy way around it other than sending that vulnerable, slightly uncomfortable email where you ask someone to do you a favour, and they'll probably do it. Or some of them will, and some of them will forget, and so they'll do it next time. Obviously, you don't want to send that email every month. You want to send it periodically, I would say once a year is about how often I ask. Maybe sometimes less, I sometimes forget, but <laughs> it's in my to-dos now. So yeah, definitely send that about once a year. And then, apart from that, also put it in your email signature. But don't expect most people to do it. That's more of a reminder so that when they do get the email, they go... Oh, I've been meaning to do that for ages. I've been seeing it. And then they go, right? Yeah, Corey, I know you did a great incentive for that as well. That's awesome. Like, that can be a great extra step. But if you've never asked, and you're sitting out there going, Oh, I don't know. I don't want to bother people. Just do it. They, they might just be sitting on their couch in the evening. The show they're watching is kind of boring. And they'll just write it from their phone. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> right, I'm just scrolling back through to make sure there's no questions that I missed, and then we're going to wrap it up. Everyone... Do, 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 do. I think I caught them all. Did I? It's like a game. Zap, 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 zap. No, it's not like that at all. That sounds really callous and uncaring. I didn't mean that. Okay. <laughs> right, I did catch them all. It just made me think of po Pokemon because I said catch or I was thinking catch them all. Thank you all so much for joining me. I truly appreciate you being here and staying with me all the way to the end. Still tons of you watching all the way to the end. I love that you join me for these each week and I hope you will join me back here on the next one. If you were brand new to this show and you haven't come along before, I hope you'll join me next time and the best way to do that is to hit subscribe and the little bell notification icon as well so that you get the next the notification about the next one as soon as it goes live or the replay as soon as that comes out and if you're interested in joining me live for the best not conference experience that you can imagine you can go to teacherturboboost.com to sign up for that that's it for this week guys catch you next time